The date is Friday, April 22nd, and you're listening to Entertain This, a thought-provoking podcast encapsulating all things entertainment. Shopping malls have long been a fixture of the American retail landscape, but nowadays they've become an endangered species. So we brought on a special guest, Kristen, of Unicom Productions, to talk to us more about them and what the future may hold for these buildings that meant so much to us in the past. So enjoy! Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to your favorite show on the internet, encapsulating all things entertainment. You know it, you love it. It's Entertain This. Entertain This. As always, for the third week in a row, we're not breaking the streak. (laughs) I'm Alex. I'm Michael. And I'm Nick. And I swear, this year is my year. I'm not going to forget to introduce us at the top of the show. People will know (laughs) our names past our voices. It'll happen. I know it. Phew. Guys, what a crazy month. The month of April has been so crazy, in fact, that there are actually five Fridays in it. So that's something we're going to have to figure out next week. But this week, being the fourth Friday in April, uh, you guys know what that means, right? Uh, mm. Does it mean it's my episode again? or No, you already yeah. did your episode, remember? You did the Bioshock Park 2. Yeah, that's right. Okay. Yeah. Um, Michael, any guess? You got a guess? Uh... If it's me, I don't have anything ready. But that's that typically is what happens when it is me anyway. So. Well, luckily, it's not you either. It's a guest episode. <gasps> oh. A very special guest episode. Um, I want to kind of start this introduction by saying entertainment is so vast now. There are so many different forms of entertainment that you can get into. Um, but there are also communities that develop out of those different forms of entertainment that you can kind of take in through the lens of the internet now, which is, you know, an entertainment hub at its, at its core. Mm -hmm. That's where we're focused. That's where so many people are focused. Um, And we three gents uh, enjoy a numerous thing on the internet, uh, mostly YouTube based. So we were lucky enough uh, after reaching out via Twitter to uh, get in contact with a creator who we really enjoy um, who may or may not know that her content is deeply rooted also in our pasts, Mm -hmm. Uh, but we'll get into that in a moment. But I am so pleased and excited to announce your cruise director, Kristen Rose. Hello, hello, and welcome to the show. It's good to be here. (laughs) How are you doing today? Thank you so much for coming on our show. I know I said that before we started recording, but I want it on record. Thank you so much for coming <laughs> on to our show. We we do really appreciate it. Oh, I, it's I was really surprised when I got the invite. I was like, yes, yes, I, I will come and talk about malls anywhere they want me to. <laughs> and when it comes to like entertainment, I feel like I feel like what we create and what you create go together so well because as a teenager, one of your main forms of entertainment, especially social entertainment is just going and bumming around the mall and becoming what is known as a mall rat, yep. uh, mm-hmm. which I think we all had a phase in doing at some point, uh, especially us three. I was kind of getting into this in the intro, but we are three boys from Cincinnati. So, mm-hmm. yeah. So, you know about Born Cincinnati. Uh, you know a lot about Cincinnati, especially the mall scene. So, you know what we were getting into. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I do. We've, our paths probably crossed at some point. I love Cincinnati. I can't wait to go back there. <laughs> where, where are you at now? Huntington, West Virginia. Oh, that's just down the river, up the river. Home of the uh, McElroy uh, family, another name in podcasting. Yes, actually, I just saw a sign. I think one of their wives is running for office here. Yeah, that's There's... probably, that sounds true. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> sounds like something yeah. they do. They've um, got yard signs. But yeah, we're so Crazy. excited to have you on and to not only talk about you know, malls, but also to talk about specifically what you do. I think that picking your brain on the knowledge of malls is going to be huge. Um, but also, it's just super cool the way that you present um, the content that you create. So we'll get into that in a second. But I think we have a few getting to know you questions uh, that we kind of want to ask you right off the bat, just so that we can, you know, get a get a feel for the waters before we get into the deep stuff. <laughs> Michael, you want to go first? <laughs> uh, sure. Um, so just as like background on me, so I, I previously worked in a mall for a good four years. Um, so I've spent 
probably more time in a mall than can be like justifiably reasonable. Um, <laughs> so for you, like what, what, what is like, what got you into it? Uh, like what got you so like into, um, wanting to go visit these places and just explore their history? Well, one of my childhood malls was Forest Fair. So no and, way. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, we, I grew up kind of on the east side of town. So like Eastgate was the local mall. Mm -hmm. But when I was a kid, when it had first opened, we would make a day of it. And my mom would take us out there, I, me and my brother. And we'd probably go see a movie at the cheap theaters, maybe take a, a ride on the carousel. It was, mm -hmm. it was a cheap afternoon out, especially in the summer. And then we'd grocery shop at Figs and go home. So I so, kind of watched it from the beginning and then have watched it deteriorate. And then I saw Dan Bell's video of Forest mm -hmm. Fair, which I hadn't been there in a couple years because most people just kind of forget that it's there. Mm -hmm. And when I watched it, I was just like, oh, this is this is so great. It's so immersive. It's like I'm there. So I had to go back. Oh, and, yeah. <laughs> Then I was like, well, if I'm going to do Forest Fair, I got to do Tri-County. And then it went from there. And now I'm making four or five hour drives to go see malls that have no stores in them. <laughs> but I think that's that's awesome. One of the like main like products that you produce with your content is nostalgia. It's like mm -hmm. huge doses of nostalgia just take you as like we're with you walking through these malls, um, especially for us. Uh, but like it's so cool how... I think you mentioned uh, Dan Bell and he kind of started the movement, I think of the urban exploring dead mall stuff, but you know, he can't cover them all. And I've noticed that you guys, like I said, started a community where like this person will cover this area of the United States and this person will cover this area of the United States. And I also just think that's so cool. Cause it's like endless exploration into nostalgia. It's a very niche and very cool content that you create. Thank you. It is very niche and and we didn't really plan for it to end up that way. I mean, the thing is that the three probably biggest mall creators are all kind of concentrated in the Northeast because Dan is in Baltimore and Sal is in Baltimore and Ace for Mesa, Anthony for Mesa's Adventures is in ba Buffalo. So I was like the furthest West and now there's a guy doing Minnesota. So now, now we're getting further and further west, and then obviously there's retail archaeology who does Arizona, but he doesn't just do malls; he kind of does retail in general. So <laughs> we're kind of spread out. There's a real, real need for someone to start doing them in the south. Gonna have to move. We're gonna have to pick up. <laughs> we're gonna have to pick up the <laughs> bill. Yeah. Entertain malls. Dot dot dot. We can do it. <laughs> Don't tempt me. So, yeah. um, so you go by kind of you go by Kristen Rose as your like. Uh, your your name while you're making videos you always sign off as or sign it on and sign off as Kristen rose but the actual name of your channel is unicom productions correct yes so that's awesome uh and i especially love all of your branding but uh one of our get to know you questions is how do you settle on that name or does it have any special meaning well when we first started the channel it was me and my now fiance then boyfriend and we were trying to i i was just brainstorming one night like what is something that's going to represent both of us. So I, at the time had like bubblegum pink hair. So I was like, Oh, it's like unicorn. Nice. And he works, <laughs> he works with a phone company. So he's calm for communications. So we became Unicom and our logo has always been a unicorn wearing a hard hat, smoking a cigarette. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's a lineman unicorn, even though we've had two different logos, the, the newest logo is still the, the unicorn with the, hard hat on and I, I get asked periodically when is that pony going to quit smoking <laughs> <laughs> never awesome. never it wants. <laughs> i mean when you talk about dead malls that's like a classic smell is that like old smoke smell so yeah. mm -hmm. it totally fits the brand when it stops fitting the brand he'll stop smoking yes exactly <laughs> when the smoke finally dissipates from the exactly drywall and whatever else but uh <laughs> that's so crazy we used to smoke inside do you remember going <laughs> to a restaurant and be like Smoking or non-smoking, it's like, I don't know, how soon are you planning on dying? That was like, <laughs> it feels like the late 2000s was when that finally stopped. Yeah. And that wasn't that long ago. No. <laughs> like 2008, 2009, they were like, okay, only smoking outside. So, pretty wild. Crazy. I remember cool. late nights at Perkins, like, being behind the plexiglass wall where they could hermetically seal in all the smoke. You go in there, smoke one, and inhale five. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah that was the same case of like all the waffle houses around us yeah. just, like you walk oh, yeah. in and it's like okay cool like we're we're just all hot boxing in here this is great <laughs> every bowling alley i've ever been to has been the exact same way yeah. yep you oh, the one that the bowl. one that's by your house still smells like cigarette smoke oh yeah it smells <laughs> like your your grandma's living room it's incredible yeah it's disgusting <laughs> uh Okay, so next question here. After watching your Overmold series, I noticed that you got a lot of experiences in the tri-state Cincinnati area. So you want to go into like how you got involved with... Uh... Well, first off, let me ask. Can we expect another Overmold series? Because Cincinnati is pretty bomb. <laughs> that was awesome. I have plans in most of the preliminary research done for a second installment. Yes. It's just, it is Ooh, a nice, it's taking a lot longer than I anticipated that it was going to. Cause most of my Cincinnati stuff, I knew the area. I could kind of yep. map out what I was going to do. And I lived there at the time. So it was really easy. Just like, okay, we're going to spend this afternoon, Saturday, you know, we're going to go see as many as we can. And we'll get the rest of them next Saturday. The city that I'm planning on doing next time is about four and a half hours away. So I want to have every single shot, already planned out all the research the script written and everything. So I know exactly what I'm filming and it's in producing my regular content too. It's just ended up being a mountain of research. I still have plans to do it probably by the end of the year, but it's just taking a lot longer than I expected it to. Yeah. No, take awesome. your time on that for like for real. <laughs> <Because> <laughs> Cincinnati was so good. I had no idea that like, uh, this is getting in kind of like local lore, I guess, but there was a, another mall within like five miles of tri-county mall. Yeah. And I was like, what? I had no idea. So it's just local landmarks that us three can go visit, which is huge to us. Oh yeah. So thanks even, for thanks for making that. <laughs> really. Even even crazier on the uh Overmauled series, which of course we were all floored to see because we're all from here and notice like everything. Like the Florence Y'all details mm -hmm. is something that like <laughs> we we know like the back of our hand. Um, I remember when the minor league baseball team was the Florence Freedoms, and then they changed it to the Florence Y'alls, and we were like, that makes more sense. Y'alls. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but yeah, and because I know Michael worked at the Florence Mall, which you had talked about. Yeah, I worked but... at the Florence Mall for three years, and then mm -hmm. I worked at Kenwood for a year. Yeah. Oh, I'm yeah. sorry. Oh, it was so all, all around. Yeah, you. it was all horrible experiences. <laughs> and then uh, I worked at Florence for one year at the GameStop, and then mm -hmm. I worked at uh, the Crestview Hills Town Center after it got turned into the outdoor mall. Yeah. Um, I worked there as a sushi chef in one of the restaurants. Chef so, Alex, so yeah, wow. We had, a, we had a little bit experience with uh, the malls that you had talked about, so that was exciting. Yeah. Um, yeah, I guess if you, if you want to go into the details about that is the, uh, the Forest Fair Mall, what you were just describing, like brought back so many memories because my mom used to shop at the Bigs too, until that closed down. <laughs> so yeah. after that, I was like, uh, where's the next bigs? It was over in Westchester. So that's just where I went after that. And Forest Fair kind of turned into this husk of a building now. And if, if you go back there like today, it's, it, it fills you with a strange sense of like, well, A, nostalgia, but B, there's a certain tinge of sadness with that too, because mm -hmm. you know that you'll never be able to experience like what it was like to, to be on timeout on the court or whatever it was called. Yeah, like the mini amusement park within the mall, which was bananas. And I always wanted to go there as a kid. But mom was like, no, we got shopping and the meat's going to go bad. We got to get to the car. So something like that. But the fact that there was a bigs in there is nuts to me. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's something that I just learned watching your videos is that there was a bigs in there. <laughs> and it's like, how are you going to go run around and go to Hot Topic and Spencer Gifts if you got if you got perishables? You can't do that. Can't That's do crazy. That. So, yeah, that that was a nuts thing to learn. <laughs> well apparently biggs was the first anchor they signed on to forest fair and originally they were planning to do like an outlet mall and when lj hooker got involved they decided to make it ultra luxury but big still already had a lease signed mm -hmm. so they've got these like super luxury department stores that are brand new to the market and biggs which was a discount hypermarket because i mean walmart supercenter wasn't a thing yet biggs was was kind of ground groundbreaking at the time mm -hmm. yeah cheapest prices in town <laughs> So, this is a big advertisement. Tell me right now. <laughs> if it is, it's around. too late. It's way too late. They're yeah, all they gone. Um, we're not going to harbor on your Overmauled series too much, even though we absolutely adore it. But I will say <laughs> uh, there was one mall that I was listening for that you missed. Uh, and may maybe you did it on purpose because you later talked about um, 
they were i don't remember the exact term that you used it was like um life centers or something like that lifestyle centers lifestyle centers and maybe that's why because i didn't know the difference uh and it may be a lifestyle center but in the like in the early 2000s there was actually a mall built right across the river from cincinnati in newport uh called newport on the levee um which is like an indoor mall. It had like a Spencer's and a Claire's and a uh, Build-A-Bear and like all that stuff in it. And I remember exploring that one as a kid too. But that was like way past when they were doing the big mall rush in Cincinnati where they were building all of the malls. This was like, it was way too late to be building a mall and we already had way too many malls. And then they were like, what if we put another mall and this anchor <laughs> is an aquarium? <laughs> That was a weird situation because I really debated whether to include it or not. The developers yeah, yeah. insisted that it was not a mall. I actually did do a video about Newport on the Levee oh, you in, did? in like 2019, I think 2018, oh. 2019. It was one of the like first 10 or so. But the developers were very adamant that it was not a mall, even though there was, like you said, a PacSun and a Hot Topic and a Claire's and yeah. You know, and by all accounts, works. yeah, by all accounts, it was a mall. <laughs> mm -hmm. But I, I really debated whether or not to include it. And I, I even had footage of it. And I, I chose to leave it out. That's awesome. But um, I do have a video about it. Yeah. I'm going to have to track that one down. That'll be my rabbit next hole. Watch. Here we go. Yeah. <laughs> I'm already way <laughs> the down the rabbit hole. The thing hole. that's so crazy about like the levee is that it was so close to becoming a dead mall. Like it was yeah. so oh, close. Yeah. And it wasn't until like a year within the last year that they completely revamped all of it. And now it's like we go there and it's a great time. Like their movie yeah. theater's fantastic. We've got bowling alleys and all the stuff. Yeah, it's bustling now. Um mm -hmm. they just lost the game works, but it was like a day later they had a brand new thing like move in. So it's lively, but I always thought it was interesting because um the first floor always had stores. But yeah. the second floor never had anything. No, like, it didn't. They, they never filled those stores. They just existed, and then they stayed empty or a mystery for years. And they had a Dewey's up there, but that was like it. They had Dewey's and one other restaurant, and the rest was just nothing. So <laughs> I was kind of curious about... I mean, you, you said you had a video, so of course I'm going to go watch that and learn about it. <laughs> going to go um, watch it now. But yeah, <laughs> I've been... Off the podcast. I might. Uh, <laughs> I've been curious about, like why it never filled or what happened did you happen upon that in your research well i think well a lot of those spaces on the second floor were smaller stores and when you start getting that saturated because you got to remember when newport on the levee opened tower place was still open mm -hmm. um rookwood commons had had just opened too uh which is another lifestyle center yeah. for those who are not from cincinnati and florence <laughs> isn't that far away so you you start running into like chains like, well, we've got a location here and a location there and a location there. We don't want to open another gap at, at Newport on the Levee because mm -hmm. we've got a gap at Tower Place. Right. So that was kind of part of the issue, I think. And a lot of those spaces on the second floor were smaller. So I think especially smaller retail stuff, it's, it's just kind of hard to find something that's going to fit in there. Oh, yeah. There was a nightclub on the one end that I think is like an advertising agency now. It was yep. immediately up the stairs from... Um, so, GameStop. Yeah, my my fiance worked there. Uh, oh, really? <laughs> yeah, really. She worked yeah. at that night by the movie theater. She didn't work at the nightclub. She worked at the advertising agency that it. Oh, was. yes, correct. <laughs> oh, so sorry, sorry should have clarified. Yeah, this, <laughs> this is such a self indulgent episode so far, and I promise we are gonna get to like the really cool stuff <laughs> but yeah us all being from the cincinnati area it's like right now we're just gawking over at cincinnati malls and we're just how crazy vibing they in are cincinnati, we're know. just vibing in cincinnati but yeah it was nuts because there was like a movie theater there was the amc and then there's this like hidden door with no advertisement except for what's plastered on the door and it's like teen blast nightclub like a nightclub for teens that was in there for years hmm. and it was just like this weird underground nightclub that existed that they never advertised for it was just there nuts <laughs> crazy you know stuff. you know you know yeah. if you know you know you gotta knock three times and you gotta yeah. scrape your fingers on the door to be let in there you go <laughs> um that's the code <laughs> but let's get into more stuff about kind of the channel and the cool stuff that that you're involved <laughs> with um so just starting off kind of broad uh one of the questions that we have what's the best mall in your opinion that you've toured so far Oh, that's a that's a big question. So in we'll terms start of big, and then we're gonna get more specific than what we already have. Get more specific than Cincinnati. <laughs> exactly. Which street was this on? <laughs> yeah, I'm just gonna get an old phone book. 
<laughs> I, I would say the most epic mall filming experience I have had was Northridge in Milwaukee, the Ooh. really, really abandoned one. That one's um, scary. <laughs> it was. It was scary to be there sometimes, too. Oh, I bet. <laughs> and, but as far as malls that are still open, this is going to be a weird one, but Middlesboro Mall in Middlesboro, Kentucky was another one of my favorites because I did not know what to expect. I had you, Normally, I research these malls a lot before I go. I research them on Google Maps, and I look to see if there's photos, things like that. This one, I didn't really do a whole lot of research into, so I did not know what to expect. And I walked in, and it looked, smelled everything like it's still 1983 we've got the wood paneling the brown basket weave tile the fountain still on i was just like awesome can i just move in here like i won't (laughs) cause any trouble like you've got plenty of space why don't you let me move into one of these spaces because i don't want to leave that's so cool (laughs) i wish i that's one of the things i really miss about like all the older malls is every mall had an awesome fountain in it yep like some sort of incredible water feature that now it's like everything just feels so sanitized and yeah, like too, like nothing feels personal anymore. I remember littering the uh, fountain at the Florence. But we're gonna get away from it. Don't but at the Florence yourself. Mall <laughs> with pennies, just trying to toss it up as high as I could because there were three layers to it. So yeah, that's definitely a memory that is implanted deep inside of my mind mm-hmm. as well. <laughs> the Tri County Mall had a massive fountain. Oh yeah, it was like multi tiered too, so you could like. I never did this, by the way, but you could chuck a, a, a coin like up to the very top. And I was like, oh, well, if I to- toss it up there, then my wish must be granted. Right. Because that was the thing <laughs> That's you, the to- you tossed the coin in the wall, the the, the fountain, and then you'd uh, you get your wish granted. I don't know how that worked, but um... I don't think I ever know- asked about the details when I was a kid. My grandma gave me a penny and I threw it in the fountain. She's like, yeah. I, <laughs> wish. I was like, just okay. having you throwing something I wasn't supposed to somewhere I wasn't supposed to. <laughs> yeah. That was the fun of it. Well, and the, the thing that was fun about the Florence Mall was uh, you could get pennies stuck in the fountain feed that came down the elevator. <laughs> yeah. So you could get them like stuck in there would be like pennies filling all the way down. <laughs> yeah. The Florence water water feature was nuts. Yeah. Um, So uh, our next question that we have on this list, kind of getting into the history here, how did you get involved in documenting dead malls? You had talked about uh, how you saw Dan Bells and you wanted to revisit that mall that you were so familiar with. Was that kind of your first step into doing these? Well, I was... I read deadmalls.com going back to probably like 2007, 2008, but Dan Bell was my first exposure to seeing it on video. What is that? What is deadmalls.com? <laughs> is this a blog? Completely unfamiliar with that. Yeah. Well, it used to be considered the premier authority on such things. Like they, they were really wow. the only ones in the game back then. Um, the person who was kind of the brain trust behind that website cut ties with the other two guys a couple of years ago. Um, and it's con- it's kind of largely unupdated, but there's some great old photos on that website. I mean, if you've never been there, it's definitely worth checking out. It's it's like a step back in time in many, many ways. It looks like an old GeoCities page. Yeah, I, I just went there and it's like, wow, okay, yeah, this looks like it hasn't been updated since like 2007, 2008. That's awesome. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. We like those old, what was that one website with the Space Jam? Is it? Yeah, the- it was the, the Space yeah. Jam website, yeah. Yeah. I remember this, the Space Jam website. Is this still up? Can we link that? No, I think they took you can it do down you in favor of the new website for the new movie. Oh, oh shucks. that's terrible. But you know what? For a dead mall website, I feel like it should have a 2007, 2008 vibe about it. You should go there and be like, oh, this was on dial up for sure. Oh, yeah. It definitely was on dial up. <laughs> From dial up to dialysis. Wow. Sh- somebody copyright that. That's a good thing. Did. Okay, um, so the next thing on here is I wanted to ask. I, I'm, I'm pretty sure I know the answer to this already, but just for the audience out there, um, you can't be creating this high quality content all alone. So, do you have like a team working with you to create this, or is it just like a a one man gig? Um, for the most part, it's just me. Uh, when I first started, I knew nothing about video editing. I knew nothing about photography. I knew nothing about anything regarding YouTube. And between my fiance basically holding my hand through the first couple of videos, because the first one I basically sat on a stool next to his computer chair and pointed like, well, this should go there. This should go there. And he did all the heavy lifting. And by the time we got to like our third video, 
I was doing most of the editing and then I did most of the audio and then I did all the audio. So it was like a stairs. I basically got baby stepped into being able to do them by myself. But at this point I do do most of it by myself. Uh, he gives me feedback, but he's got kind of a really time intensive job that he just doesn't really have time to, to be involved with it anymore. So I, I yeah, 90% of it is just me. That's impressive. Thank so you. I, I noticed, uh, maybe it was in the credits of one of your videos, but does he do most of the drone shots that you guys do? Yes, I am scared to death of our drone. I'm afraid I'm going to crash it. So if we do totally drone, if there's any drone shots in our videos, it's either him or somebody else. <laughs> Thanks to Nick, I am a newly, uh, a newly acquired drone father. So I totally get it. You launch that thing in the air, you're like, I really hope this ends up back in my hand by the crash. end of today, or I'm going to be really sad. Uh, just kind of getting into it while we're in this neighborhood what content creator to content creator what's your kind of setup look like what kind of camera do you use what kind of editing software it depends on the setting because most of the time i'm having to be somewhat covert because security in general does not care for what i'm doing Aww. so 90 percent of the malls i shoot especially the ones that are still open i'm using a dji pocket 2 which is a little teeny tiny camera i wish i had it up here but it's actually downstairs it's about the size of a Snickers bar and it's got basically the camera off of a drone on top of it. Wow. And it's, huh. you can, I've got little hands and you can't really even see it. If it is a mall that is, I've either got permission to be there or that it's not open anymore or something like that. I use a Sony a 6,500 nice. on a Ronin SC gimbal. And I record on a sure SM seven B mic. I use premiere to edit after effects audition, just the whole Adobe suite. Incredible. <laughs> that's the same stuff that we use, so that's really mm -hmm. awesome. Michael's flexing. He he's the only other one with a with a sure <laughs> SM fifty five. This is a blue. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I had a blue mic. Um I used to have a spark and I it the cord on it went bad and I couldn't get another one. So it was right after I got my my um Turkey Trump's fun bucks from, from the government and it, my mic went out and <laughs> My that is the was just like, best thing. What'd you that call it? That is the best way to describe what that was. My COVID money. It was Turkey Trump's fun box. <laughs> Turkey Trump's <laughs> I can't take credit for that one. That, that That's one Ron came up with. But yeah, well done, he, he was just like, go to Micro Center and get get the same Mike Sal has. Just get it. So, <laughs> that's so awesome. I did that. Here we are calling it a stimmy. And then that's you're what, like, oh, it's a Turkey Trump. <laughs> it's a Tricky Trump fun buck. That's what I should have done with my Tricky Trump, Trump fun buck. It's hard to say. It's kind of a tongue twister, isn't it? It is, but she nailed it first go. That's because she's a professional, you Professional, see. yes, of course. Our charm <laughs> comes from how flubbed we are all the time. Yes, yeah. but her <laughs> crisp audio every episode is incredible. Um, So I think, Michael, you have one, right? Yeah. Um, So when you get ready to, like, go to one of these places, what? how, how do you actually, like go about researching these sorts of places. Cause a lot of this information is pretty like, like the topic itself, pretty niche and pretty hard to come by. It's not on Wikipedia, which is like the disturbing part. Cause that's where we get all our information from. For That's our not episodes, where we get so. all our information. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good jumping off point. Speak for yourself. <laughs> <laughs> I get most of it from old newspapers. I have, access to a newspapers.com subscription. And I just generally start searching very, very broad. And when I find a topic that seems like I need to research it more, I, I narrow my search just a little bit more. Uh, I will research other websites. A lot of times there's maps out there. And I also have the brain trust of the discord to mine mm -hmm. if I need to, mm -hmm. uh, because especially when I was putting over mall together, finding some of those old photos, it took some help. So I got help from gotcha. some of the people in the discord. That's awesome. That. Um, I guess I'll go next if that's okay with you. But um, you kind of mentioned the Northwoods Mall, and that's probably the most rundown I've ever seen any building, um, <laughs> even in this Rust Belt area that we live in. But um, I wanted to kind of ask what was your maybe creepiest experience or most unnerving experience within a mall? Probably the most unnerving experience is in the video. It was when I was inside the old movie theater and I heard what sounded like a crashing noise coming from in, from behind a closed door to the men's bathroom. Mm. And some part of me, like right before that, was like, oh, maybe I'll just poke around to see what's in here because I was, you know, trying to document everything. <laughs> and I heard that and I'm like, nope. Now I don't want to run out of here because I'm going to make a sudden move and they're going to hear that someone's out here, but I'm not opening that door. 
-hmm. could just be a raccoon, but I also don't want to run into a, an angry raccoon either. So, <laughs> so kind of on that note, um, some malls, like you said, are open. Some of the malls that you tour are closed uh, and you have to get permission. Are there ever times where like malls are like completely abandoned? And you're just like, I'm just going to do this. I'm just going to go in and <laughs> film this. That never happens. So then when no. it comes... So when it comes to like the closed malls, who do you reach out to? Uh, usually I try to find out who owns it or who's managing it and contact them. Um, sometimes I can get there through a friend of a friend. Like mm. Northridge, I, I went through somebody else who already had permission to be there and I just tagged along. But like Upper Valley Mall in Springfield, Ohio that I did last year, I actually just reached out to the person who was in charge of the organization that owned it and mm -hmm. sent them links to a couple of my... Um, couple of my other videos just to give them an idea of what I was planning on doing. And they said they were fine with it. I had to buy insurance. But other than that, it was, you know, completely permission and everything. I really want to get that kind of permission for Troy County after mm -hmm. it closes in May. So that process is going to start soon. And if anybody from Troy County is watching, please give me a call. <laughs> I would love to get in there and film it one last time. Yeah, totally. Yeah. That's the big news in the dead mall scene, I guess if there is such yeah. a thing as news for things that are dead, but um, yeah, Tri-County Mall, the one that we all know and love, some of us do, um, is closing in, when is it, May tw yeah. 28th or something like that? May 15th is what they've got on their website. <sighs> that is the end of an era big time. It's been there since 1960. Like it's, it's an institution. It's 60 years old. Hopefully Almost. they don't like completely demolish it, you know? They're not planning to completely demolish it. They are actually That's leaving good. portions of it intact. I think the uh, center court with the big skylight is one of the portions they're going to leave. I've, I've seen some photos of the model they built. It's mostly going to be gone, but there's parts of it that'll still be there. What are the plans for it? Do they have plans released yet? Uh, mixed use. Uh, Princeton Schools is going to be doing something with it. So they're going to be having some kind of educational thing there and apartments and probably some kind of retail, but it's going to be more like an open air retail. I think that they're wanting okay. to have it not be a quote mall because that's becoming a dirty word in development because there's so many failing ones, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. Well, that kind of feels more like a facelift than a necessary closure, which is good. But there are so many beautiful things about that mall that are just like so period and so fun to look at. Yeah. So it is, it is sad to see that go. Um, that's yeah, that's just kind of sad. Uh, so the first, well, I guess not the first, but the, the kind of thing that I'm wondering since we're back on the topic of Cincinnati, because we love it here. Um, <laughs> what was like it's the okay. first mall around here? What's the oldest one? Is it that one? The oldest one I found was, Kenwood um wow. but Kenwood Kenwood opened as an open air plaza mm -hmm. and it wasn't enclosed until the late 80s as far as enclosed malls in Cincinnati well Swifton was never enclosed so Tri-County was probably the first enclosed one it would have opened in 1968 wow it was either Tri-County or Western Woods I think it was Tri-County though hmm. yeah that's how we uh when you start to get into like the definition of a mall, I guess it's uh, it's kind of tricky because then you can go like the first ever mall in the world was probably the uh, what was that called? The arcade in Rome or something like that. Yeah. Right. Something like that. Um, but it's just we've come a long way. And I think that, you know, seeing all these dead malls disappear is kind of a a sad thing, but a necessary thing, because that's, yeah. you know, that's property that people are paying taxes on and so on and so forth. But what do you think is kind of the ideal situation for these dead malls um, after they've died, I guess. After they've outlived their usefulness. Yes. <laughs> I, I mean, I, I, I agree with you. Cause I mean, keep in mind too, that like if they're tearing down an existing mall, that's already a parking lot, they're mm -hmm. not having to level a forest to build whatever it is they're wanting to build or right. repurposing that piece of property. I don't know. I mean, I think that really depends a great deal on, what sort of mall we are talking about and where it is located, because there's a lot of these places that it's, there was, it was once a vital area and now it's not. So turning it back into a retail facility is not going to work, but maybe turning it into industrial or a school mm. Mm. Uh, would work. Cause I, I feel like community colleges could inhabit, especially if it wasn't a huge mall, because you could Super use the easily. old storefronts as classrooms. You could use the, anchor spaces as a library or uh, common mm -hmm. areas like that could probably work. So that would be up there. 
I, I think my biggest thing is that I would rather them have a plan for what to do with it when they close it, as opposed to like a Rolling Acres or a Northridge situation where it's mm -hmm. just going to sit abandoned for a decade. Yeah. Like it really makes me happy that it seems like they're ready to get moving on Tri County. It's that it's area. not going to sit there and become Rolling Acres. Oh, so. Yeah. I don't know. I, I kind of, uh, have this ongoing fantasy where I want it to turn into a Mario Kart indoor track or something like that. Wouldn't yes. That <laughs> Wouldn't that be awesome? You know, Florence yes. Mall kind of already did that <laughs> with their yeah. ride around animal situation. Yeah, they have the zip. they have the train too. Oh yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. It's not really a come on, it's not really a train. It's more of an ATV with a uh, smokestack <laughs> come on, on Nick. it. But uh, <laughs> we're getting we're we're uh, <laughs> kind of splitting. It, it, Nick is very big into trains, so and for the same reasons that we like dead malls, right? It's like the <laughs> this thing that people used in the past. I won't gush about it here. There's an entire episode about it, but this thing that people like to see in the past and now it's still around today, but in much smaller quantities. So I don't know. It's kind of a historical aspect going on there, but that's kind of my personal dream. We can turn these places into go-kart tracks. <laughs> that would, or paintball arenas or anything like that. But yeah, yeah. think oh, yeah. about Forest Fair. If, if they had go-karts in there, everybody would go in there. Yeah, absolutely. I, <laughs> I would go in any mall that had go-karts. Hot laps. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely would do that. Um, so one thing that this like there was a super powerful statement at the end of part three of your overmauled series because you started out by going a lot of people think Amazon killed the malls, but that's not the case. Uh, and then by the end, you say, like, we killed them all and the people who built yeah. all these malls killed the malls. Um, could you kind of get more into the message of that and kind of what you meant by that um, as you know, what what killed the malls? Uh, what why what are the reason that they're dying? Well, there's a lot of reasons, and Amazon is really not any big part of it. It is a company that has taken an opportunistic advantage of a situation that was already happening. Mm -hmm. So Amazon really malls were dying way before Amazon was even a thing. Because you got to remember, Amazon Prime wasn't really a thing until at least the last decade, like the mm -hmm. early 2000s the nineties when you started seeing malls die out, that isn't what caused it, but it is the fact they built too many of them and we had recessions and back when, you know, Victor Gruen envisioned the original modern shopping mall, most households could run on one income. Mm -hmm. So you had someone at home who might want to spend a day out, go out with the ladies, go have lunch, go try on some clothing, this, that, and the other. And, People don't have time to do that anymore. There's it, there's very few places in this country where you can survive on one income where someone has that much leisure time. I mean, even kids, teenagers' lives are way more scheduled than they were when I was a teenager in the 90s. Hmm. So they don't have time either. So there's that. You don't have time to shop. And they started taking things out of malls. Like, think about what used to inhabit malls when you were in high school. It's music stores. Well, those aren't really a thing anymore. Bookstores, yeah. those aren't really a thing anymore. Payless isn't a thing anymore. Uh, Radio Shack isn't a thing anymore. It's a lot of women's clothing stores and a lot of them are selling the exact same thing. That's another thing I've noticed recently is that like when I was a teenager, maybe it's because I was more in tune with the fashions, but I, I think that there's something to this that every store had kind of their signature look. So if you went to Express, you could expect to, to get an Express version of the current fashion. So you'd go to Contempo Casuals or Gadzooks. And it seems now like they're all selling versions of the same piece of clothing. Sometimes literally the same piece of clothing. Yeah, no, like the homogenization of all the different styles and stores and brands as a whole is like super concerning. Like yeah. there's just so much identity that's been lost. A lot of it. And the thing is, too, that back in the 80s, Kmart or, you know, the R equivalent to Walmart or Target back then, Kmart Hills, etc., they weren't the place that you went to go buy current fashion forward clothing. That was where you went to go buy boring basics for school. That is where mom drug you to go buy some Jordache <laughs> jeans and some kids. And <laughs> yeah. then later that weekend, you would go take your own money to the mall and buy something cute at Gadzooks. that was super on trend. That was going to be way out of fashion next season. Now target and Walmart sell those things. Right. So yeah. when I think when big discount retailers got into fast fashion, that didn't help either especially when they were undercutting the mall boutiques prices. Yeah. There like I, I remember like for me, the heyday was like the Hollister, the Abercrombie and Fitch, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. like very yeah. heavy where it's like you walk by a store and you just get like a contact high. 
from the <laughs> amount of perfume. Cologne. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. And I remember uh, like one of my favorite things about going to the mall back then was like, there were so many chances to see things that just, I never had an opportunity that I had at like Florence mall. Like you, you would purposefully go to different malls because they had different selections. Yeah. Like, the, I, go ahead. Oh, that thrill of the hunt has kind of been replaced by the internet. That is one yeah. thing that, that the internet has done for us because they're all selling the same stuff now at the mall. They want to stock stuff that's popular that sells. Yeah. And they, I don't think they're taking risks the way they used to. Maybe they should. Yeah. What kind of risks uh, would you suggest they take? I'm curious. I don't know. I mean, I, I went to a mall in like way, way out in coal country, Kentucky that had mm -hmm. a boba tea in, um, what's takoyaki stand Ooh. in it. Yo. Like, I, I've never he seen said, a takoyaki stand yo. anywhere else. And I was like, Oh, no. they're not open yet. Cause it's not lunchtime. <laughs> I really want to try that. But that's the kind of risks I'm talking about. You know, maybe do something that you can't get anywhere else. Yeah. Yeah. That's... Now that you say that, like, I remember going to uh, like the Dublin mall up in, uh, up in Columbus. Yeah. Uh, and they, that was like one of the first places in the Midwest that had a Yagoot back when Yagoot used to be a thing. Oh, I loved Yagoot. Oh, uh, and I remember <laughs> like my family, we would drive like from my grandparents' house, like an hour to that mall just to get Yagoot on our way home. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, but it completely resonates with what you're saying. Like, there's no like unique factors about malls anymore. It's like every kind of going back to the whole thing we talked about with the fountains, like everything is becoming sanitized and like this very like similar idea of what a mall should be. And it's, it's boring. It's I, I miss when things were super fun. <laughs> They when they, you didn't have big corporations owning them, you didn't have as much homogenization. They felt a little bit more regional. Like I remember going to the mall. You're talking. You were talking about Tuttle Crossing to go mm -hmm. to California Pizza Kitchen because we did yeah. in Cincinnati, and you know they're just all the same now. And and that makes me sad. But because like Simon Malls, they, if you've seen one Simon Mall, you've seen them all, especially if they were original builds by them. Mm -hmm. And it didn't used to be that we had big corporations that owned all the malls. Maybe they owned four or five. Yeah. So kind of going off of that, then, like, what would you like if you could travel back in time to like when when a mall was in its prime, which one would you like say that you want to go to in its prime? Yeah. I mean, on a personal level, I would love to go back to pre Mills Forest Fair one last time because <laughs> mm. <laughs> it always kills me when people go on the subreddit like, look at this place. It's got a 90s aesthetic. That place was remodeled in 2004. Wow. Yep. <laughs> and the original look was way more 90s, but it was that swanky 90s with the brass and the hunter Ooh. green. <laughs> back when we thought hunter green was like the, the peak of luxury mm -hmm, until mm -hmm. it got played out and then it came back. So that one would be way up on my list. I actually, having seen Northridge in a state of decay, I would have liked to have seen it in its prime. Yeah. Seeing old pictures of the Florence Mall, I'm I always wish I could see it that way, where it's like all bright greens and like burnt oranges yeah. and just absolutely different. Yeah, that that's awesome. Um, we kind of hit on this uh, a little bit, but when filming, do the like mall cops get on you? And if they do like often are there parts of the videos that you have to just like completely cut you're like i can't include this part or have there been videos you've had to scrap entirely uh there is one one mall that i did have to kind of scrap it i think i ultimately ended up releasing the footage as like our 200 subscriber special so this was like our fourth or fifth video and it's like a three minute long video but um fort steuben mall in steubenville ohio at the time, I had bright pink hair, and it's way out in the country, and I think I stuck out like a sore thumb. And while mm -hmm. they didn't ask me to leave or tell me anything, really, the security guard was following me around way too close for comfort. So I just kind of ducked into JCPenney, and then I, like, left. So I kind of got intimidated into leaving. And I've only had really a, one other incident with security, and it actually it wasn't even security. It was a maintenance guy at... Uh, um, I'm trying to remember what that mall was called, Logansport Mall in Logansport, mm. Indiana, which is now defunct. But the guy really wanted to know what we were doing and why we were there and why we were just wandering around. And we came up with some BS story that <laughs> <laughs> that we um, that we were looking for office space for a construction oh, company. Perfect. Mm. I'll do it every time. Yeah. We're so he left us alone after that. Yeah. Nice. Catch your toe. <laughs> that would explain the camera too. So that's that's a genius. Oh yeah. Excuse for sure. 
I'm going to use that yeah. when I start my Southern Mall tour. There um, you go. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't even know where to start. Um, but kind of going back to the whole like history thing, the nostalgia factor, do you think, because I wasn't alive back then, believe it or not, but do you think there was anything truly special about the, the late 80s or the early 90s? Yes. Well, I, in the late 80s, so in 1988, when Forest Fair opened, I was six years old. Mm. So, yeah, I'm going to be 40 later this year. <laughs> the less said about that, the better. Yeah, talk about that. But, <laughs> but, I mean, there was something special about it. But at the same time, the, that specialness, that, that mall culture was kind of hitting fever pitch, meant that that was the point where we reached oversaturation. Because, like, Cincinnati, for instance, they not only built that brand new behemoth of a mall for us fair every other mall in Cincinnati doubled in size nearly mm -hmm. because oh, they yeah. they didn't want their customers stolen so Eastgate added a wing and Tri-County literally added an entire other floor uh Northgate expanded Kenwood Town Center and closed and it was it was just too much like it was magic for a couple years and then everybody kind of went on to the next big thing and then we had a recession and people started not having time to go anymore hmm. Yeah, I guess it's kind of a sad story because I know our experience with malls is kind of limited to like the like really late 90s or like the early 2000s when mm -hmm. these things were already on their downhill slide. And I don't think we got to really experience like these particular buildings in their heydays. So um, I don't know. It's just kind of a thing that was has been on my mind. Uh, I mean, is there anything really truly special about any time period? I don't know because <laughs> we've only lived through like what two decades at most. So um, it's kind of wild when you put the idea of a like mall into a certain time period. Like you're like, oh, malls, you know, 2000s. Because when I think malls, I only think like one time of year, which is Christmas, when it's yeah. like the lights and the big red streamers are coming down and you know that everybody's decorated up for Christmas and it's busy and you're there and you just want to go. It's like eight o'clock at night and it's dark because the light usually comes from like the the sun uh the sun windows up on the roof and you're there late because your dad forgot to get your mom a you know christmas present and <laughs> you're rushing around and everybody's Every there and or maybe what i'm thinking about is uh black friday stuff like that where all the decorations are up and you're just there super late yeah or super early in the case or of black friday early. yeah that's that's always it always seems like i end up at the mall on December 23rd or December 24th, because I just found out somebody is coming to the family get together that I wasn't told about <laughs> until just now. It's like, well, I don't know her. So I'm just going to go buy her a candle at Yankee Candle and call yep. it good. <laughs> <laughs> now, see, that's where dead malls have a sort of advantage for shoppers like us, because yeah. those empty spaces are filled with places called like the gift shop where it's like yeah. it's open for two weeks and it has everything that that family member, you know, nothing about once come yeah, buy yeah. anything and you'll good be cards. okay. Yeah, exactly. Like the, the Chris, the Christmas equivalent of uh, Halloween spirit. Yeah, yes. yeah, <laughs> correct. Which they're doing a movie about. Did you guys know about that? What they're doing? They're doing a a, a Halloween spirit themed movie. Uh, it's me it's like coming out on strictly HBO, which is like crazy. When are we getting our dead mall movie? That's what I want to know. <laughs> oh, did I just spark an idea in you? This, start writing. Totally, totally this start. has happened before. Like, aren't there movies like set in malls? I, I really don't know. Because I'd love um, to watch them. Well, there's mall rats. And there's, there's mall rats. There's a chopping mall, which is absolutely <laughs> horrible and well worth a watch. It, it, if you Chubby don't have ball. if you don't have sensitive sensibilities because there's a, a lot of uh, 80s slasher style nudity in that movie but it is mm. hilariously bad there's um a lot of fast times at ridgemont high takes place in, mm -hmm. in a mall yep. mm. stranger things recently uh yeah. had its mall season which was nuts. Yeah. but i want like a uh like a midnight in paris but it's a mall and instead of going back to uh, like the thriving liter literary scene in Paris, it's like going back to the 80s and 90s in a mall, but it's like mid it's like midnight in Paris. So like someone from today is like wandering through an abandoned mall, and then like the train pulls up, like the little train, and they get in it, and then they're they're taken away <laughs> to to the 80s and 90s mall era where it was thriving and a huge place to be. You sit on Santa's throne and click your heels three times. It'll take you back to 1987. <laughs> That's a way better idea. I can picture that in my head. That's incredible. 
Wow. Thanks, Santa yeah. Claus. <laughs> we'll, 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 we'll get together after this. We'll write this. We'll, we'll, this <laughs> we'll make out. it happen. We'll make it happen. Us and our production team of me. <laughs> I help sometimes, and that's, that's, true. <laughs> that's about as good as we got. <laughs> um, so dead malls aren't the only thing that you post. You you have other series as well that you uh, work on. I like your failed series. Um, that's a good one. But Is that coming back anytime soon? Yeah, yeah. that's a good question. We have talked about that. That was kind of Ron's baby, and they we we started that because it was like oh we should start another series where we don't have to travel and then we found out that 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 style of video is actually much more labor intensive than actually filmed <laughs> videos and it didn't get the traction that we wanted because we weren't really sure how to promote it so mm. now might be the time to do that and i actually am probably starting an, a second series later this summer once i get a couple episodes filmed that is going to be an on location film type thing but it's going to be not malls it's going to be just interesting retro architecture that i encounter nice i can appreciate that we had an abandoned kmart across the street from our high school that we would kind of frequent it wasn't abandoned but it was like half the store was closed and everything else had yellow signs on it for like years <laughs> so that that is the kind of thing that i can see you doing as well I'm all about that old architecture i think that um I definitely watch all those videos if you made them, but there's a lot of architecture like in Cincinnati that is underappreciated because we have yeah, like the, the prototype for the Brooklyn bridge that we all know is the Roebling bridge. Um, there's like the Karoo tower. It's kind of like a mini scale down empire state building, but um, those are just two just examples that come to my head. How did you say it? Karoo. It's Karoo. Is it? C-A-R-R- is it two mm-hmm. syllable? Yeah. 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 I'm from here, and I've no. always heard it, I've always heard it as the crew tower, and I always just assumed it was a military thing. No, no. it's like it's the Kentucky side of the things. We've also got like down in Lexington, we've got Versailles instead of Versailles, and we call everything Krogers instead yeah. of Kroger. Krogers. We, we're gonna go to Krogers. Myers. Yeah. Myers. <laughs> I did. You know how long it? It was like a Mandela effect when I found out there weren't S's at the end of those. It's like, are you yeah. serious? Got that town, uh, what's it called? I, I call it Louisville, but uh, I'm wrong. Louisville. So. Louisville. Louisville. Yeah. You got to swallow <laughs> it. You got to swallow every syllable of that word. Louisville. Oh. That's like the only <laughs> correct way of saying it. Sorry, well, we down, got off track. That's okay. Down the road for me, I'm, the next town over is spelled like hurricane, but it's pronounced hurricane. 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 <laughs> Hurricane, West Virginia. Awesome. Hurricane the Gherkin. <laughs> well, I mean, we have Florence, y'all, so we're right there with you. We there put you Florence, y'all, huge on a water tower for legal reasons. <laughs> That's the most Kentucky thing in the world. Very Kentucky. <laughs> so, um, of course, you get joy out of exploring these dead malls and the nostalgia that comes with it. Um, but just kind of a final getting to know you question, what other forms of entertainment do you enjoy? I watch a lot of like indie movies. Like I'm really, really into Sofia Coppola, which is going to be my quick this. But <laughs> awesome. And you can uh, tune I really like next week to hear that. <laughs> I really like the Florida Project. I'm also mm-hmm. I, I really like video games. I really like the cutesy video games. You know the ones that they stereotypically think you know it's only girls that play those, like Animal Crossing and Slime Rancher and Mario Kart. Mm-hmm. Like, my girlfriend runs a semi su- a semi successful uh, Animal Crossing Twitter. That is like she's gone viral multiple times doing Animal Crossing <laughs> posts, which is awesome. So yeah, she's way into that stuff too. She's our she like runs our show. So you don't know this, but she's been like controlling everything as Hi. we've been going along. She says hello. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's really awesome. So on terms of uh, other forms of entertainment, I think we're going to flip quickly and segue into our quick this part of the episode. So when we get back, I believe, Nick, it's your week for a quick this. No way. I think so. <laughs> so yes way. We'll be right back. <laughs> and then the, the musical interlude will play, and then it'll bring us back in. We're back, <laughs> and that's it. Um, <laughs> it'll make sense in the post. It'll make sense. I explained stuff. That's what you guys missed who are listening at home. I explained how our editing works. Um, Nick, take it away. You got a quick this for us? Who's got a timer? Um, so just a quick reiteration of what a quick this is a quick this is uh it's usually a topic that we think maybe we couldn't cover in a whole episode maybe there wasn't enough content to cover it in a whole episode but we still wanted to give it its time in the sun and give it its due so you got five minutes um to talk quickly about something in entertainment that maybe couldn't fill a whole episode but you're still passionate about so whenever you're ready 
Michael's got your timer pulled up. Okay. I got another YouTube channel. That's you sacrilegious. Guys. You can't I do know. that. I'm sorry. You can't do that with Kristen sitting right here. That's messed sorry. up. <laughs> okay. okay. I'll get started. Um, the human body is a remarkable machine. It's capable of turning potato chips into usable energy that our muscles can use to move and our organs to function. On top of doing all the necessary functions that we need to do to survive, it can also handle a large amount of bad things that we throw at it. This may come in the form of eating or drinking too much of something that we know is bad for us that but tastes really, really good. To things like drinking too much coffee in order to stay up all night that has these negative side effects the, the day after. But what I'm here to talk about are those cases which the body can't keep up with the stupidity that we've put it through. These cases that one may end up presenting to emergency room, where a certain Bernard Sue will read your story of how you got wound up in this place. Um, so this Dr. Bernard goes by Chubby Emu on YouTube, and this is how many, how many of his videos uh, will begin with a patient in the ER experiencing these life-threatening symptoms, and nobody can figure out what the problem is. So Dr. Bernard is actually a real life doctor. He doesn't just play one on YouTube or TV. Specifically, he's a clinical pharmacist who uploads educational medical videos and which are occasionally true stories about him or his colleagues that um, they have seen or heard about these particular experiences. The information in these videos has been anonymized as not to break any laws, HIPAA violations, of course, but after all, these are medical case analysis videos that he ends up making. So He's notable for several running gags, which he's in on, and it's kind of funny to watch his Twitter go off every time he does it. But um, some of these gags are uh, him saying emia, meaning presence in the blood, or telling his viewers that blood culturing takes several days, which the patient doesn't have because he's dying for some reason, or the, <laughs> the one that he does with every video, wagging his finger while saying, presenting to the emergency room. <laughs> <laughs> So at the start of every video, he does that. But he kind of also has a formulaic approach to his video titles, which are somewhat very clickbaity. But uh, it, you'll get you'll get into the trope as soon as I start reading these. Um, for example, there's a student ate suspicious leftovers for lunch. This is what happened to his limbs. Or <laughs> a boy rubbed one tube of pain relief cream in between his legs. This is what happened to his brain. That's his most recent video. <laughs> Anyways, I stumbled upon this one of these videos uh, sometime last year out of curiosity because of the obvious click clickbaiting going on, and I, I wanted to know what, what the deal was. So, of course, I had to know what was going on there. So I clicked the video, and I take this ride on this unfortunate guy's trip to the ER. And speaking of somebody who has visited an ER, it can be a very scary place. So what's the entertainment value here? Well, I find it comforting to know that I will probably never visit the uh, hospital for any of the reasons listed in his videos, but beyond that has always been some sort of odd fascination for me to look at all the different systems that normally function within a body and uh, find out what makes them work and what happens when they don't work. And spoiler alert, it's usually pretty bad. And of course, I have to know what happens when you rub Ben Gay on your gentleman parts. So <laughs> not that I was going to try that in the first place. So <laughs> here's what ended up happening to the poor guy in the ER after he rubbed uh, you know, the stuff on his stuff. Uh, <laughs> but I should once again ask you to go watch this video because he does a much better job at explaining it and all the uh, entertaining events that lead up to it. But first, there's the obvious sensation of cooling and then burning. Uh, but beyond that, he just presents to the emergency room with uh, a headache, hyperventilation, and he's peeing a lot. So the doctors now have to figure out well, what's what's the deal with this guy because they don't know what he just did previously. And of course, he's not going to tell him, yeah, I wrote Bengay on my balls, and that's how I ended up here. So, because that would be really embarrassing to tell a complete stranger that. So, they do blood tests and stuff, and they find out that there's stuff that's not functioning as it's supposed to. And then a friend who's there blurts out what he did, and they're eventually able to treat him. And he manages to make a full recovery in the end. Now, a lot of his videos don't end with a full recovery. They say, a partial recovery. So this is a rare happy ending, full happy ending um, that this that this man does end up experiencing. So that's a happy note. But I'm going to end my quick this here on a happy note too. You should go check out Chubby Emu on YouTube if you want to find out uh, what happens with all these medical oddities. And if that's something you enjoy watching, maybe you're a morbidly curious person that wants to see more of that kind of stuff. 
Um, to go check them out on YouTube. And thanks for listening. In, thanks for listening in and uh, entertaining this. Well done. Is that five minutes? It was close enough. You yeah. were like 10 <laughs> seconds off. Um, Could have rifted a little more. That's <laughs> absolutely nuts. I don't know if it's crazier nice that, pun. that that exists or that you decided specifically for that story to be the one that you told out of all of them. Um, it was the most recent one. I had to, you know? <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's fair. Uh, Kristen, it seemed like you were familiar with the YouTube channel. Are you? Okay, now I'm on. <laughs> there we yes, go. I am, actually. As soon as he said bizarre ER cases, I'm like, that's Chubby Emu. Chubby nice. Emu. <laughs> yes. <laughs> We need a team up. We need a someone who died in a mall <laughs> and had to be rushed to the ER. So we get that that team up. This young man entered an abandoned mall. This is what happened to his lungs. <laughs> <laughs> this is what's going to happen to Nick when he goes on his uh, Southern Mall tour. Yeah, so wear a respirator, kids. Wear a respirator. Yeah. Do you, do you wear respirators when you're like in some situations? I do. I, I had one when Safety I was at first. Northridge. I had exactly the same respirator that Jesse and Walt wear on Breaking Bad. So nice. it's good enough for them. It's good enough for me. That's right. I know that's right. Um, you wore one of those when the COVID hit, you know? That yeah. impact you. Just the big old... The big pink cartridges. More. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> one of the funniest things was seeing what, like, made-up suits people had on. Like, people in, like, the inflatable T-Rex suits who were wandering around <laughs> Targets. Or, like, people who, like, stapled a plastic bag like a clear plastic bag to a bucket sure. that they like cut out and they were like this will keep me safe that was like beginning of the <laughs> pandemic that was when things were still fun um things were never fun <laughs> yeah, <that's true. laughs> well there was yeah, like a week home. there was like a week where everybody was having fun with it but then they officially made a pandemic and everyone stopped having fun yeah. with it <laughs> pretty much Back when we thought we were all just getting an impromptu two-week vacation and everything was yeah. going to go back to normal when we flattened the curve. Now, two years later, it's like, get me out of the house. Yeah. <laughs> Please. Absolutely not. Take me to the mall. That's what, yes. that's what birthed uh, our podcast was the whole pandemic going down and us thinking we weren't going to be able to hang out with each other. So we were like, oh, we'll get together weekly and talk. We'll, we'll do a call. And we were like, yeah, we'll record it. And that's what started to entertain this. Now we're 109 episodes in. Wow. Look at us go. Yeah, it's nuts. <laughs> Um, thank you so much, Kristen, for coming on. It's been a huge honor, and we got to ask you all the questions that we were shouting at our phones and other streaming devices while watching your YouTube videos. We are such huge fans. Um, you have so many awesome things that you're working on. I want to give you the opportunity to go ahead and plug some of the stuff that you have going on. Uh, I know that you have a Patreon for sure, um, so feel free to plug that, but go ahead and plug whatever whatever you'd like. You can find my videos on YouTube at Unicom Productions. I am also on Twitter at Unicom Vids, V-I-D-S, and on Instagram at Unicom Productions. Um, I've got several mall videos in the works, and I am also starting another series later this summer where I go places on my motorcycle and take photos and video of them. So, <laughs> so your motorcycle license going? I am getting it on Friday. I took my class last week. So <laughs> Nice. I got that. That's awesome. Yeah. Good to hear. All right. Well, uh, as always, if you have anything in the realm of entertainment that we have not covered yet and that you want to see us cover on this show, you may just be invited on for a guest spot. Who knows? Uh, but there are a couple of different ways that you can get in touch with us. The easiest way is to go to our website, www.entertainthis.com slash ET dash podcast, because now we got multiple podcasts on the same website. Um, you can scroll all the way to the bottom. There's a little questionnaire that you can fill out there. Uh, send it straight to our inbox. That's a great way to get in touch with us. Or you can just email us. We're entertainthispodcast at gmail.com. You can find us on Twitter, entertain underscore this. Instagram, entertain this podcast. And on Facebook, we're podcast entertain this. And as always, entertain us so we can entertain you. And you can entertain this. We'll see you guys next Friday. Bye! Bye! Bye. Special thanks to Kristen Rose of Unicom Productions for joining us on this episode. Additional commentary is provided by Michael Savoya, Nick Mustakangas, and Alex Steele. Our showrunner and resident fact checker is Chloe Price. Our theme music is Rush Bubble by Aaron Spencer, with interest in music by DJW. Tune in every Friday for new episodes, and thanks for listening.